Isa. Today I'm making myself a new needlebook and I thought I would take you along on the process. So here I prepared the outside of the needlebook, a piece of fabric and some wadding on the back that I've just lightly quilted. I guess it's fairly densely quilted. It helps to make the the fabric a bit more sturdy, both the wadding and the quilting. And I've got my other bits and pieces. So this is a felt bit that will go in the middle. So I was actually going to show you my old needlebook because the reason why I'm making this one is I wanted to make some changes to the needlebook just to make it a bit more useful. But I can't find that needlebook so I guess it's good I'm making a new one. So the first thing I need to do I prepared these two pieces of fabric. It's just two folded pieces. And then I've top stitched them at the fold. And they're gonna go here. And here. So they will form pockets, which I think are really nice to have in a needlebook. So it's quite simple. I'm going to take these to the sewing machine first. And I'm sorry I can't take you to the sewing machine because there's just not enough room. But I'm sure you can imagine what it'll be like. And I'm also going to add some of this elastic to go with the button. I tried a few different ones. But they all sort of disappeared into all the colours of the fabric. The green one, I really like this one, but it just disappears. Same with the red one, I really like that one. And I really like this one, but again, it just disappears. The blue one is a little bit better, but still. And the blue or the yellow one disappears as well. So what I came up with is this magenta one. I think it goes nice with everything else, but it sort of stands out a little bit. So I need a little bit of elastic here. Not sure how much I need. I think this will actually it might even be too much. There we go. So this is what be yeah, about four inches, ten centimeters. And some of this will go inside. So this is not a minute step-by-step -step tutorial, but I'm sure you can follow along. So I've got my inside or lining fabric and because it's just a solid color, doesn't matter which way is up, 
if it had a print then the print would be showing here so I'm going to line these up that and then I've got my elastic which will go here with about a centimeter three eighths of an inch sticking out if you're making something like this don't put it in like that because then this will be inside the the lining so it goes in like this And then I'm going to take the outside, place that face down so that the wadding is facing up. Do you like my Franken wadding here? I sewed some little bits together. I like using up the bits. So then I'm going to sew all the way around, but leaving a turning gap at one side could be here it could be here but don't do the turning gap in the center I suppose you could it doesn't really matter so much I prefer to do it at one side so now I'll go over to my sewing machine for a few minutes and sew this all together for you it'll just be a second and then we'll have a look at the next step I've sewn my layers together before I turn everything right side out I can just snip off the ends of the elastic And maybe I should just double check that I have sewn everything together properly. I have. And then I'm going to clip the corners so that when I turn it, it's not all bulky. And I like to cut it quite long instead of just cutting across like that. I like to cut off a long triangle. I feel like gives a better result and clipping the corners is especially important because of the wadding which takes up a lot of space just hope I left a big enough turning gap. I think it would just about work. Right, so that's turned right side out now. Before I do anything else, I'm just going to use the tip of my scissors to very carefully poke out the corners so they're nice and sharp. It's okay if they're not perfect. It's just a needle book after all. But it's nice if they look reasonably sharp like that one that's a good one you could use a knitting needle or a crochet hook or even a pencil to do this just 
do carefully so you don't break through the fabric or the seam. That's okay, I think. So now I need to prepare it to top stitch it. The top stitching helps everything lay flat and also it closes up the turning gap. You can Press it with an iron, but I can't be bothered. So I'm just going to sort of pull the seams so that I can see the stitches and then sort of fold it back down again. So that the folds of the fabric sits sit as close to the seam as possible. I used a quarter inch seam when I sewed this together. You could use something a bit bigger if you prefer. Before I added everything else. I first did diagonal stitching across the top, the opening of the pockets. It helps to keep them in place when I'm sewing it together, but also it helps to just slightly close the pocket. And the other thing I did was I sewed this onto the pocket, inside lining, whatever you want to call it, with a slightly narrower seam first, so that I didn't have to pin it down while I was sewing everything together. Just makes it so much easier when you don't need to have pins in there. Now everything else is clipped together, so now I just need to fold down the turning gap. Which can be a little bit tricky, especially because this is quite thick, so I've got three layers of fabric of the dark turquoise and then there's the outside which has the wadding inside as well so it is quite thick I think that looks okay So that's ready to be top stitched. I'm going to use this lovely variegated Orifel thread, which works really nicely with the inside. 
and it also works nicely with the outside. That's what I use for the quilting of the outside. So I'm going to do that now and then we'll look at the next step. Now I have top stitched all the way around using a narrow seam allowance so that I would catch the turning gap here. Next step is to attach the pages which is where you put the needle. So I'm just going to fold it in half and I'm going to check where is the middle of the needle book. I'm just going to Press the corners here with my fingers. There we go. So that will go there. Open it up. So I've cut this so that it's smaller than the needlebook itself, just so it stays nice and secure inside. So now I'm just going to sew down the middle so that that's attached. So now I've sewn in the pages for the needles and pins. So now there's only one last step to finish and that is to sew on the bottom. It looks like my elastic moved a little bit when I was sewing everything together but that's fine. Just have to make sure that I place the button so that it's in the right spot. So that looks about right. Now this step you could do before You sew everything together. I prefer to wait till the last because as you saw the elastic might not stay where you want it. So I come through the only the outer layer with my needle and thread just to secure it and I tied a fairly good sized knot on my thread just so it doesn't pop through the fabric and it is a little bit awkward to sew the button on when you can't just go through the fabric so usually I come through or at least to start with come through just the button And go through the fabric to the next hole in the bottom. Come up through the hole and through the one on the other side. And then I'm just going to make sure that everything is nice and tight. seems okay before I go through the fabric again. And I do this a few times to make sure that it's completely secure. And being careful not to come through to the f inside because if I did then I would sew the pocket shut and that's not very useful. And I'm keeping 
the stitching underneath the button. I don't really want that to show outside the button. I'm using embroidery floss for this, but you can use sewing thread of course. This thread just happened to be on the sewing table right next to where I was sitting and I like the colour so. Right, I think that's nice and secure now. Now and pass the needle through the fabric again and I do it one more time so that it creates a loop pull the needle through and repeat that so that I can basically do two knots and that should hopefully keep it nice and secure Right, so just cut off the tail of the knot. And that's the finished needlebook. I'm quite happy with that. I look forward to using it. The fabric, by the way, is one I designed. And there's a, another colorway as well. It was inspired by my little niece and nephew. At the time when I designed this, they must have been six or seven. And they were just obsessed with these butterflies. And they had them in little sort of netted cages to help them develop into butterflies and it was just so fun to hear them being so excited about these butterflies so I designed this fabric and then I made it in a different color way just because I wanted one with blue on it it's in my spoon flower shop if you want to check it out if you want some butterflies and flowers in your life Right, so now my needle book is done and it's big enough for my scissors. The reason why I wanted to make a new needle book is the other one I have, wherever it is. The pockets are going this way, so the opening is that way. But that means that stuff can easily fall out. So I wanted to make a new one where when I close it, everything is safe inside. So a needlebook like this is a perfect gift for anyone in your life who's new to sewing. Because you can actually stash quite a lot of stuff in there. So the scissors go in there. Maybe some sewing thread, although that does get a little bit bulky. But if, for example, it's someone who has started doing some English paper piecing, then sewing thread is what you want, isn't it? You could also put in some embroidery thread. And because the pockets are quite large and the whole thing is fairly large, you could put in a bit of fabric and a small... Look, isn't this cute? This is a three inch embroidery hoop. And that fits in there. Perfect. Although, of course,
because it's not very big for a, a project. The 4 inch hoop unfortunately just doesn't fit properly. I can get in the pocket with a bit of nudging. Actually I'm not going to force it. I don't want the corner seams to rip. <laughs> But I guess what you could do, just put it like that. And it will still be a, a nice little starter kit for someone. Maybe as a Christmas present. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more, why not subscribe? I hope you have a great day. Happy stitching. <laughs>